I'm Mark Kenny with Garage Gurus. In today's tech tip, we want to talk about doing what we call the live dead live test uh, on a hybrid vehicle. Uh, the idea here is we want to make sure that when we pulled the service plug, as you can see right here, that we have definitely killed all the high voltage to the front of the vehicle. And the live dead live test is our best way to verify that. Also, we want to make sure that we have all the necessary equipment. Meters and meter leads need to be rated for high voltage. Cat 3, Cat 4 ratings uh, is what we're looking for. Right. And then we need personal protection, safety glasses, and we're going to use gloves. These are uh, high voltage gloves designed to work on these hybrid vehicles. These are rated up to 1,000 volts. Now, <clears throat> there may be some covers that need to be removed. Like you see right here, uh, I do get questions from techs every now and again. They say, hey, Mark, uh, just because I'm taking that cover off, do I need to wear the gloves? <laughs> I would err on the side of safety and wear the gloves. Uh, there again, we're working out with high voltage. You're not quite sure what's going on. Yes, you have removed the service disconnect. So yes, the system should be powered down, but we're also doing this test, this live dead live test to actually validate is that system dead or is that high voltage uh, not present up here at the front. So, Always err on the side of safety. Always follow your service information. If you're not sure, put the gloves on. There again, it, it's, I know it's a little clunky to work with those gloves on, but I would take, I'd rather take the chance of losing a fastener or having issues like that than I would this metal bracket hitting something that could cause a high voltage spike and uh, cause damage to the vehicle or even to you personally. Uh, remember, we are dealing with voltages that are high enough to uh, kill you if you're not careful. All right. Now, with that being said, I would not shy away from working on these systems because they are very safe if you follow the service procedures and you follow what the manufacturer recommends as far as the process to uh, de-energize the system. So let me go ahead and get started. I'm going to get gloved up here. And what we want to do is... The first step we want to do is we want to validate, does our meter read correctly? Okay. Now, we're going to set this meter in DC volts. Let me get it turned on here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to touch this battery that we have over here. So let me bring these leads up. All right. And you'll notice, before I even make contact with the battery, notice these leads have these little caps on them probably a little different than what you've seen in the past as far as uh, uh, leads. You know, they're just a little metal tip sticking out. The reason for that is, is because we're gonna use these to measure uh, potentially a high voltage. And because we have voltages high enough that we could actually create an arc across here. If I was to put these two leads into a connector, let me go ahead and pull these little caps off. So we'll set these right up here. If I was to put these two leads in a connector, maybe this close together and there's 200 plus volts available, I could very easily get an arc across here, cause some welding or burning, damage to the connector, maybe even damage to the, the uh, guy that's holding the leads. So we put those caps on there to uh, minimize that by just having the very tip stick out. Right. Now, since we're working with low voltage here, Obviously, we don't need the tips, so let me go ahead and put this alligator clip on here, which makes it kind of nice. And I'm just going to go over here to my battery. I'm going to connect. I'm just going to touch the battery positive. All right, let me get the meter up here where you can see it. Notice we got 12.2 volts. All right. Now, GM says to do this test, you could use anywhere from a 9-volt battery to a 12-volt battery. Now, I know this battery fully charged should be 12.6. This is a battery you use around the shop, so it's down a little bit. I'm not really too concerned about its value. I'm just concerned if I can repeat that value because there again, this is my baseline. I'm establishing that the meter works, okay? Next step, and I'm gonna move around to the side of the car here so it'd be easier to see. So let me grab my meter and come over here. And so our next step is to actually measure at the connector. Now GM's process is they want you to compare 
from the, the leads coming from the battery to ground, both leads, positive and negative, and then compare across them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and ground this connector right here, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and remove our service connect right here at the inverter, okay? And you can see these two leads right here go right straight back to the battery. So those are my high voltage leads. Now, as I said before, I've kind of pre-staged this a little bit. I didn't think you guys needed to watch me take brackets off. That's pretty straightforward. All the brackets have been removed. We've got to, to where this connector is exposed. We're basically gonna lift up. And as we lift up, you will see there's a cam action that's actually lifting that connector off of these spaded terminals. Okay, so let me, for the moment right here, let's just put this back here out of the way. And we look down here and we see we've got two pretty good sized spade terminals. All right. Now, some of you may be noticing, hey Mark, you have not put that connector back on this lead and you would be correct. The reason for that is, is because with that connector on, I cannot get into the inside of this terminal where that spade's gonna make the connection. It just physically won't fit. So we're gonna talk about that more here in a second. So with it grounded, all right. I'm gonna go ahead, get inside of here, and touch this lead, okay. Make connection. And we can see, meter's bouncing around a little bit, but we can see that it's coming down towards zero, so we basically have zero volts at this point. All right. We're gonna do the same connection over here, on the other one, notice 0 0.003 of a volt. Might as well say there's no voltage there at all at this point. All right, definitely not high voltage. This battery uh, on this vehicle is about half charged right now, which puts it a little over 200 volts, about 220, 230 volts is probably what's available in the back. All right, so we've done our test. Okay, we validated. There's no voltage on this terminal. We validated there's no voltage on this terminal. We've compared to ground. The next test they would like you to do is to compare to each other. So let me go ahead and pull this off. Now this is where we were talking about earlier, these two leads, okay? In order to minimize the danger on this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert the positive lead in first so it's insulated, because it's down inside, as you can see right here, and I'm gonna leave it at the bottom of the connector. And then I'm gonna take my negative lead, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna to touch and I'm gonna come up at the top of the connector. There again, down inside of there, keeping these as insulated from each other as much as possible. And we'll see that <coughs> our voltage reading reads zero at this point. So there is no voltage available at this connector. All right. The next step that GM would like you to do, it would be to test at the inverter. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead, we've tested here, we checked for voltage on both these terminals, we have none. So let's go ahead and validate that our meter is working properly. So let me go ahead and put my little alligator clip back in there. I'll step back around. We're gonna come over to our battery. Okay. And let me go ahead and clip this onto the negative post. Touch the positive post here. A little slippery with these gloves on. And notice I have 12.2 volts again, right? So I validated my meter is correct, right? Now in some vehicles, that may be all you need to do at this point. You've done your live, 12.2, gone to your vehicle, it's dead. You've come back and validated your meter is live, gets a live reading, gets the same reading. So we're confident that this meter is accurate. At this point, what GM would like you to do is actually to come back over here, let me come around to the side, and they want you to test at the inverter connection. And what they're asking you to do here is, go ahead and compare to ground like we did before, and they want you to touch these terminals, okay? At this point, I could put the connectors back on. Let me find it right here, because all I need is this little tip. We're gonna to touch this terminal right here. And let's go ahead and put our meter up. Notice we got 0 .001 of a volt. Theoretically, there's no voltage there at all at this point. All right. And then we're gonna do the same test on the other terminal. 
okay? We get the same value. Now, what we're doing here is we're looking at, is there any stored energy inside of this inverter? Inside of these inverters, there'll be capacitors. And the job of the capacitor in this thing is to give us a little boost energy when we go to accelerate the vehicle or put it under a load. Uh, and those, these inverters, or this inverter here, the capacitors inside of it, can store up to 600 volts of energy. So we want to make sure that's dead also before we go doing any kind of service work on this vehicle. Next step they would, GM would want you to do, basically come over here, clip onto one of the terminals. Now go ahead and touch the other terminal, and we're looking for zero again. So we've done our live with the battery. We came over and tested our inverter. So let's go back over. We see it's dead. Let's go back over here and do our live test again. Hook up to our battery. Notice we get 12.2 volts also. All right. Now, there is one more test that GM would like you to do. Let me go ahead and turn this off. <clears throat> At this point, come around here. You have a connector right here. Kind of get my hand out of the way so you can see. You have a connector right here that goes to the AC compressor. Uh, AC compressor on this vehicle, a lot of hybrids, are electric. All right? They're not belt driven off the motor. And this one actually, the battery cables uh, go all the way back to the battery for this one uh, in order to run the compressor. So we need to make sure that that circuit would be dead also. Uh, I think you get the idea here when we tested this connector and tested here at the inverter. I don't think we need to pop that connector apart because they're again, they're going to want you to test both sides of the connector, do all three steps that we saw before. Live, dead, live, back to the other connector, same test, go back to your live, dead, live. I hope that kind of explains live, dead, live um, as far as the test and the terminology. Uh, I would also encourage you when it comes to hybrid, make sure you're safe. Uh, there, like I said, there's potential for high voltage, gloves, proper meters, proper service procedures, follow these procedures. Uh, even though theoretically when I pulled this connector, it's a dead circuit, all the high energy now is stored in the high energy battery in the rear of the vehicle, we don't want to take any chances. Again, we don't want to risk any kind of electrocution or any kind of problems there. So the idea behind the live dead live test is we're going to validate for sure that the system has no power at the front or it's dead, as we call it. Right. I'm Mark Kenny with Garage Gurus. For more tech tips like these, go to our Garage Gurus YouTube channel. And for more information on Garage Gurus, go to garagegurus.tech. Thanks. Yeah.